Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a weekly television show called Team Chicago Challenge. My website is teamchicago.tv, teamchicago.tv. In the next 10, 12, 14 minutes, this could be a history lesson. I got an email from uh, the senator in the state of Illinois, Senator Durbin, pointing out, I got this on August 25th, pointing out about U.S. intelligence community, which we're now finding out really doesn't mean that much. Learn that Russian President Putin personally ordered a campaign to influence the outcome of the election in President Trump's favor. This is such a lie. I mean, let's talk about Dickie Durbin. He has been the senator, I believe, like 20 years now. But when he became, now, this big Russian problem that you hear about on the news, the Russian influence. Well, I remember back in 82, see, Dick Durbin got elected to Congress in 82. And uh, he was part of that movement in back in 82, 83. Why won't President Reagan meet with the Soviet leader? Why won't President Reagan sit down with the Soviet leader? Why won't President Reagan, what is wrong? He's going to create chaos. You know, they hated Reagan as much as they hate Donald Trump today. And back then, the Russian leaders, the Soviet leaders, were butchers. I mean, absolute, complete butchers. Starting with Stalin, Khrushchev, Brezhnev, Chinenko, and drop off. And then finally, President Reagan. Now, you can go on YouTube. You're watching this on YouTube. You can go on YouTube, put in Dan Schmidt, Berlin Wall, and I'll explain the whole thing about Ronald Reagan and his plan to bring freedom to the world and his plan with Margaret Thatcher, the Prime Minister of England, and Pope John Paul II. Those three, it was a miracle. They caused the Soviet Union to collapse just with pure power and love. But uh, so here's the same guy back in 82, 83, 84, meet with the Soviets, Ronald Reagan. Now they come up with this dream as we're now finding out and today, today is uh, the, 20, uh, the 19th of January. So they are finding out now that it's really the Democrats have more ties with the Russians, with the Soviets, or the previous Soviets are more ties with the Russians. Go back to Hillary Clinton, that gang of, uh, um, well, people in the FBI now that they're finding out. So, Mr. Durbin, let me make this a history lesson and a geography lesson for you. I understand that you went to good schools, you got your law degree, but I know you never worked. So I don't expect you to know much. But anyhow, I'm going to give you my history lesson because the main reason I'm doing this is because you came out of a meeting the other day with President Trump and, you, Trump and you said that he used some evil language talking about, which my term, I think President Trump must be watching my stuff on YouTube. He must have picked up my term. My term is these hell holes. Why of all these people coming here from these hell whole countries? And Maybe you misunderstood what the president said, and maybe he did use the other word, and I have referred to them countries, but not on TV. But the reality is this. These people are coming from hell whole countries. Not anything about the people. I mean, the people need to rise up. And in this day of cell phone technology, this day of education, people in the rest of the world, this is my message to the people in the rest of the world, study the American Constitution. Study what makes America great. Study the free enterprise system. Study love of your neighbor. Good Christian Western civilization. That's how you succeed in the world. That's why America is the greatest. So I'm going to draw a little map of the world here, and we're going to explain to Senator Durbin, Dickie Durbin, exactly what countries of the 196 countries in the world which ones are the hell holes? So first, let's, uh, let's draw a little bit of uh, Africa. Well, Africa is uh, like this, like this, goes over. Here we got um, Greece, got Italy with the boot, 
you got Spain come up. This is all France, Denmark, England, Ireland, Scotland. You got the uh, you got your um, Scandinavian countries, and then all this from about right here where the Earl's Mountains are. All this. Well, actually, this is the continent. This is what divides the continent. So you got Russia here, you got Eastern Europe, and then you got all of this is Russia. And then you come down here, and now you got China it takes up this much here, right? And then you got Indonesia down here, you got the Vietnam, Cambodia, it comes down, extends down, and this down here you have Australia here. So this is the world eastern part of the world. Oh, all right, then you got Saudi Arabia, and then you got, let's not forget, India. This is India. Okay, then you got your uh, Indonesian. Now we got North America. We got the East Coast, got Florida coming around, Yucatan, Central America, go up here, Greenland's here, the top of uh, the North American continent, got uh, um, the bay up there, over to Alaska, come down the west coast, Baja, Mexico, Central America, and then that all comes down to South America. So that is the known world. Now, what countries are the hell holes? And I am telling you, all right, there's 196 countries that, that are recognized by the UN by general 196 countries. Out of these 196 countries, probably 146 are hell holes. All right, so what am I talking about hell holes? Well, let's talk about uh, women's, women's rights. Women have the right to be treated equal. Let's talk about uh, water. Let's talk about toilets. Let's talk about um, um, roads. So what are the hell, just see, when you get guys like Durbin, you get guys on ABC, NBC, CBS, PMS, NBC, CNN, New York Times, Washington Post, Chicago Tribune, Chicago Sun-Times, they have no knowledge of history, they have no knowledge of um, what is proper civilization? What Western civilization means? So let's point out what I consider the countries to be hell holes. First of all, all of North Africa, all the way into the Middle East, anything that is under the control of the Muslim religion, for the majority of the people living in them countries, it's a hell hole. For the vast majority of all the women, it's a hell hole. The Koran does not speak of love of thy neighbor. So anybody, any women that live in this area are not treated properly. So that takes in a good swipe. Then we go to um, India. Now India is another country that has given up on it. And it, it did have the English, um, it, they were colonized by the English. And they did have the opportunity to absorb what they learned from the English, and they've rejected half of it. In fact, you want to talk about Gandhi, Mr. Love and Peace and all that? Well, he's the one that threw the Muslims out of India and gave them Pakistan. So the Muslims had to leave and go to Pakistan, and they're still mad about that. But that's a whole other story. So anywhere in here, India, as far as flush toilets, I mean, this is a modern, this could be a, the modern, at least they have free elections. This could be a modern country, and they do have industry, and they are building motorcycles, and they are building a lot of things, and they do a lot of telecommunications, but they haven't quite accepted the concept of Western civilization or uh, love of thy neighbor. So India is not would be considered a hellhole country. Then you got China. All right, now China has accepted capitalism. But it's only capitalism to the point of you can make money as long as you take care of your party members. There is no free elections. I mean, as they learned in uh, uh, Hong Kong, I mean, there is no free elections. And 
President Obama just sat by as the Chinese for the next election put all their own candidates up and anybody that protested got wiped out in the street. It, it was all in the news. Where was President Obama then? Nowhere. So that's, China is still a hellhole, okay? I mean, they do have roads, they do have Buick cars, but the vast majority of people have no freedom. And then you got, uh, all right, so Japan is right here. Now, Japan is a great country. We beat them in World War II, and they woke up, and they accepted Western civilization, Western ideals, and Japan is a great nation. And right over here, you got your North Korea, and you got your South Korea. South Korea, we're buying cars from South Korea. 45% of people in South Korea are Christians. They believe in Jesus Christ. They believe in love of thy neighbor. And that's one of the reasons South Korea is doing so well. In the meantime, you got this complete moron in charge of North Korea. But the Democrats, they're half the problem with the, the Korean thing. Just like the Democrats in 1975 lost the Vietnam War. Mark that down. Anybody wants to debate me on that? Vietnam War was lost in 1975 because of the Democrats in Congress. Okay, then you got your Indonesia. Now there's some of these countries down in here maybe doing okay, but they still don't have the freedom thing. I'm, I'm sorry. Now Australia, in the meantime, which was a colony of uh, England, which does accept, uh, which is, uh, accepts Western civilization, the concept of free elections, the concept of uh, uh, equal rights for everybody, the concept of uh, uh, every man has a right to vote, and titles and land ownership is also part of Australia. So this is a good country. Now let's talk about the rest of Africa. Africa is still suffering because of tribalism. So uh, there's... Um, 55 different countries in Africa, and they all complain that because they were colonized and that's half their problems. No, they have rejected any bringing up to the 20th century back in the um, 1960s, 1950s, when they uh, got their independence and threw out their colonists, but then they rejected half of what they learned by being a colony. So. The vast majority of people in Africa, especially when you get into parts of Africa where the Muslim influence is there, they are hellholes. And as far as having toilets, having running water, having women's rights, tribalism does not allow women's rights. So you got to understand that. So the vast majority, now the people in Africa could be great people and they got the cell phones. It's up to them, they can read. It's up to them to change their countries. That's the big problem with guys like Dickie Durbin, the rest of the Democrats, everybody in the media. For some reason, we're not gonna talk about the greatness of America, and the greatness of America is because we are free. And the rest of the world has accepted many, 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 many things that are part of what America is. The automobile, cell phones, all this is the American thing, wearing jeans, all this is part of the American, American way of life. So uh, if they reject Americanism, if they reject, it's their suffering. But the opportunity is them for understand and to see this stuff. So uh, are there a couple countries? Nigeria is one, maybe, but the people have to learn. The people have to stand up. The people have to understand we want equal rights for women, for men. We want that to work. Okay, now Europe, even, now Eastern Europe is uh, not allowing all these refugees in because they have their own problems. They've only been free since 1989, 90. They threw off the Soviet domination. They're trying to find their way and they're still, the communism is still inbred with some of them like the the, the president of Poland said in 1945, because Churchill couldn't do anything to help Poland, because the Soviets were in Poland, he, he predicted that the Poles would have to suffer for two generations. Well, that's exactly what happened. It was two generations 
after World War II, it was finally Luck Valencia and that leading revolution with the support of the Pope and Ronald Reagan, Eastern Europe finally got free. In fact, some of them countries are inviting the Jews back, the Jews that got thrown out, trying to turn their property back, trying to get these Jewish people to come back and resettle and bring their enterprise, their entrepreneurship back to some of these uh, countries in uh, Eastern Europe. Now, Western Europe, they have their own problems. And now, let me tell you another thing about this whole Muslim thing. Most people don't know this. But the Muslims, back in the 8th eight, eight, century, pushed their ways all the way up to just about Paris. And then it was the first um, crusade was led by the Hammer, Charles the Hammer, and he drove the Muslims out of France. It took another until the 14th century or the 15th century for the Spanish to finally throw them out of Spain. So, but in the mind of these Muslim folks, they believe once they've been anywhere, they own it and it's theirs. I mean, they control all this area here. The Muslim religion controls this entire swamp of area, right? And yet every Muslim is so crazy that they worry about this little dot called Israel and called Jerusalem. They are insane about this little dot right here called Israel and called Jerusalem. Um, they're crazy about it. So that's the only shining spot. I mean, it used to be, Jordan used to be a pretty good country, not so much. Lebanon overrun. The Christians have been run out of Lebanon. And it was a majority Christian country at one time. So now let's come over to North America. And uh, I'm going to wrap this up pretty quick. I can't keep talking forever. You'll, maybe we'll tune off. But now oh, let's not forget the Great Lakes here. Okay, Chicago, New York, San Francisco, L.A. We, America is great because we have, we are the continuation, the continuation of Western civilization. Not always perfect, but we trace Western civilization back to Greece because they believed one man, one vote. The idea you had the right to vote. They did have slaves. That's a whole nother subject that I could talk about for hours. The Roman Empire, in the beginning, where they had elections and they could vote, the Roman Empire is part of Western civilization. Drama, the concept of drama, the concept of art. But when Rome fell, well, the reason Rome fell, because when Caesar crossed the Rubicon and brought his troops, and then he declared himself emperor, that was the beginning of the end for Rome. Prior to that, I mean, they did depend on invading, but also, I mean, Jesus Christ has to give some credit because when Jesus Christ was just preaching right here, at that time, the Roman Empire had influence and had peace in this entire area. It was so much easier for the gospel to be spread throughout these areas because the Romans did bring peace and tranquility. But then Europe went into a purgatory from about the third century all the way to the 12th century. And now we're going to talk about what Western civilization and what it means to the United States. First of all, we go back, we can trace our concepts to the Magna Carta in uh, 1215. And there, the noblemen had the swords to the king's neck and demanded that he recognize that, yes, you could be king, but you also have to obey the law. That's the main trust of what the Magna Carta says. Then the English came over, and just by pure chance, these 13 colonies with the influence of England that we created the De Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And that's what makes America great. The concept of, we are, yes, we had our sins with slavery, but we cast off those sins. So now let's talk about the American. And then I'm going to wrap this up. So right down here is Mexico. 
Mexico is maybe the number one hellhole country. And the thing I have to ask all them people on TV to talk about this immigration thing. They're making all these speeches. The immigrants, well, we got to protect the dreamers. We got to protect the dad. Oh, we got 20, 20 million people here. What are we going to do about them? Well, why don't those 20 million, they've had the opportunity. In fact, one third, let's see, Mexico has uh, 90 million people, right? So maybe 30 million, 20 million might be living here right now, maybe 30 in and out, back and forth, maybe one third of the Mexican population has been exposed, everybody along the border has been exposed to America. And yet, why do they reject our principles? Why do they reject the idea of ownership and titles? Mexico has got 500 miles of Pacific coast right here, the Baja Peninsula. I know this because they race motorcycles and it's 500 miles from uh, uh, down to La Paz. So you got 500 miles of surf. Then you got another 1,000 plus miles of more Pacific Ocean, all the way down Acapulco and all that. If Mexico would have titles, if they would accept 21st century ideals and give titles and allow Americans and Europeans to own property, property rights is really number one key. You could be building that entire West Coast that would look just like California all the way down. You would have hotels, motels, you would have condominiums. People could own, know they own. Because in Mexico, if you're a gringo, if you're a norte, you cannot own property in Mexico. You have no title rights. So why don't these Mexicans that have been in here in the United States, why don't they bring back some of the things they've learned? That's the question. When you see these guys on TV, why don't you try to fix Mexico? Mexicans would much prefer to live in Mexico, believe me. Okay, Central America, the majority of Central America is a hellhole too. Where are the parents? Where are the fathers? And if it takes every man in Central America to be armed and protect their property and protect their family and t root out these gangs, that may be what they need in Central America. That is one reason why America, the United States of America, the right to own a gun is one of the biggest keys that we are free. Everybody has a right to protect themselves and protect their families. So gun rights are not evil rights. Gun rights are the rights of man. Now, so Central America, majority of it hellhole. Now you can say, well, what about the Sandinistas down here? Well, the Sandinistas have their little communist country and uh, nobody's leaving. But it, they don't have freedom. You got Cuba here, no freedom. Haiti, Haiti, the slaves revolted in Haiti in uh, 1810, 1811, 1812, I think. Why didn't they read the Constitution? Why have they, but maybe because they speak French, I don't know. But they have been exposed to America. Why don't they wake up? And then you have Bill Clinton and old man Bush had billions of dollars and nothing's improved. Doesn't anybody follow through? All right, South America. You got Brazil. Brazil, no property rights, right? No property rights. So you got millions and millions of people living on these dwellings around the major cities. They don't have the right to property. If you don't have the right to property, they have motorcycles, they have cars, but nobody owns anything. So if you don't own it, th these countries should know this. I mean, this is 2018. Wake up. Then you got Argentina, you got uh, Peru, some of these countries in South America, I think South America, is, there's uh, 12 countries in South America, but the biggest basket case is right here, Venezuela, where uh, I could understand when they uh, took, took control of the oil from uh, Total, which was a French company, I believe, but it's still socialism, Marxism. See, these are Dickie, Dickie Durbin, listen. 
Marxism don't work. Progressivism, Marxism, socialism, none of it works. Never will, never has. Once they run out of other people's money, right now, the people in Venezuela are living in sub-third world conditions. Sub-third world conditions. Evil, evil in Venezuela. I mean, when are they going to wake up? You've got to accept. Here's the key. Dick, now listen, Senator Durbin. Christianity, uh, the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, Western civilization, and the United States is the, the end of the road when Western civilization, Europe now has created their own hell. So let's just talk about the United States of America. We are what we are because of this freedom, liberty, ownership. Ownership of property is what makes America great. I mean, banks, banking system, mortgages, all this stuff, even though there's crooks and there's criminals all involved and interwound, still we have the best system. The rest of the world should wake up and accept, look at what we've done. Instead, you got guys like Dickie Durbin saying how bad America, how the troops, the American troops are like Nazis. So, Mr. Durbin, let me, oh, one more thing before I end this. This is my message to you, Senator Durbin, also. You've been the senator for over 20 years. In your time as the senator in the state of Illinois, over 2,000, 3,000, well, probably five to 6,000 young black people have been murdered on the south side of Chicago and the west side of Chicago. And you are the senator for the entire state. That blood is on your hands. I came up with a solution. I know what the solution is. It's to empower the people that live on the south side and the west side. We empower those people. Then they will have freedom too. So that's uh, my message to you. That's on your hands. It's on your hands, on Richard uh, M. Daly's hands. It's on um, um, Rahm Emanuel's hands. And here's Donald Trump trying to bring companies back. We have tens of thousands of acres, acres on the south and west side of Chicago. Who is putting the deals together to get these companies to build factories so that the people in the neighborhoods don't have to drive all the way out to the suburbs to work? It was Richard J. Daly that drove all these manufacturers out of Chicago. When are you going to wake up and work with President Trump? Okay, I think uh, I'm uh, running out of time. I probably talked too long. Anybody on your staff, if you want to come up and you want to debate me, Senator Durbin, I'll debate you anywhere, anytime, any place, because I know. I know what makes America great. I can explain what makes America great. You have lost your way. Your progressivism, socialism, Marxism, it's all evil. I'm Dan Schmidt. My website is teamchicago.tv. My email is teamdan45 at gmail.com. Send me an email. Um, I can argue this with anybody, and I don't have to fight with anybody. I have the proper debate forum. Come up here and debate. I'm ready to take you on. Again, Dan Schmidt, teamdan45 at gmail.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you learned something in this lesson.